an hour or two to get my notes and figuring mm -hmm. out what to write. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's go inside because I think we pretty much looked over the landing point. Okay. Uh, here. And okay. unless we want to stop at this frame for a second, but I think we've let's seen Let's go. But yeah, let's go. <laughs> Through the touch of light. Mm. Well, great through that touch of light. So, um, this, this, that, whoops, I'm sorry. This quote that we're walking over. Now, I've shared this with uh, Maria, but I want to share with you. Because okay. uh, I think this is where we stopped last time before we came in. Um, uh -huh. This quote by an ancient Indian philosopher named Patanjali. And I used to be kind of freaked out with some of the interactions that I would have with nature myself until I heard this quote, and it made a lot of sense to me. If you become steadfast in your abstention of thoughts of harm directed toward others, all living creatures will cease to feel enmity in your presence, meaning they don't see you as an enemy. And uh, I experience that, you know, quite frequently now. I, I was telling you, when I was in New York, the birds in Central Park didn't seem to be afraid of me. Wow. Um, so, and so it's pretty true. I, I think he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> and to the right of the door here is a poem written by my sister, Lori. Her pen name is Laurel Shree. It's called A Dream. And it's a message that I feel she left us because she actually was killed in a car accident. <gasps> so the, sorry about that. On the yeah. day that this exhibit opened, which was 11-11 in, in, in 1988, she, she died. But I, I feel that uh, poem, A Dream, is a profound message that she left us about overcoming, um, like, removing the walls uh, that hinder our, our communication so we can, we, can, we can hear our mutual music is really what it's about. And I don't expect you to read it now, but just to let you know what it's about so you can take a look maybe later sometime okay take a picture or something so if we go to the right we're just going to kind of try to go through here quickly because there's lots of things to show you outside too mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and this first frame is a lot of different creatures who have happened across my timeless watch and i literally do wear that watch um without a face and somebody sat down with me at a coffee shop one time, and they said, what's wrong with your watch? And I said, nothing. So well, how come it doesn't make <laughs> I said, because there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> so this exhibit is a lot about timelessness, about the gifts that nature gives us when we, when we share an unmeasured amount of time situation. Um, and I've yeah. many examples of that. Um, and... Uh, and the first one, there's a well, there's there's Yo-Yo the jumping spider, and I sent you a, a link to the playlist of the videos that are in here, including Yo-Yo. You want to check that out? Okay. Uh, but Yo-Yo spent over an hour with me. I really don't even know how long he would have spent with me because I had to go and left him go on a tree. You'll see on the video. Um, and that was the first one that I took. That ant just happened to cross my watch shortly after I had gotten it. And at my sister's house, and that was the first first time that I took a picture of a critter on my timeless watch. And then it seemed to be seemed to happen a lot more. In fact, I had I had a little spider like Yo Yo just a, a week or so ago. When I sat down on the same bench, and <laughs> he all of a sudden appeared on my leg and jumped right on my watch. <laughs> Long enough for me to laugh and say, oh, hi, yo-yo, and then some people came by and he took off. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was a pretty interesting message. This one I called, Jiminy, what time is it? It's time, uh -huh. to, time to change the world, of course. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, this exhibit is a lot about that. It's about that kind of awareness that I think we need to... Um, transform reality. And the caterpillar, there's a, I don't know what kind of beetle, but I just call it a beach beetle because I was on the beach. Oh. <laughs> and a bee. Yeah. Oh. Another caterpillar. 
Um, and the name of Mata, I wanted to tell you too, Maria. I was telling you that you know that's associated with my soulmate. Last time we talked, um, on my yeah, the bracelet there. But Amada is actually a really interesting word name that is derived from numerous dialects: um, French, Spanish, uh, African, and um, and Asian. In Sanskrit, it means deathless. So it's oh. like deathless love. Wow, fantastic. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that grasshopper also spent over an hour with me after I almost mowed over him. <laughs> uh -huh. And I stopped to, to save him. And when I first tried to catch him, he was trying to get away from me. But as soon as I got him on my hand, he just calmed down. And then, like I say, he spent over an hour with me. There's some other pictures in, in another frame over there uh, where he was actually sitting on my finger while I was talking on the phone. Uh -huh. So how long did you did it take you to collect all these photos of the insects on your watch, sitting on your watch? Um, these photos were probably taken over, I mean, I don't know, a few years' time, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm often in situations that that one right there was a miracle. <laughs> and when it, when it comes to uh, my relationship with... Amada, uh, Amy, um, I actually sent her an email on October 31st, happened to be Halloween, um, didn't plan that, but it was an email about happy marriage and about uh, longevity and relationship and people that I, weddings that I had photographed and friends that I knew, and, and it was her favorite email. So literally on, on the seventh anniversary of the day I first sent that email, I resent it. But the mm -hmm. day before, I walked out my door and these ladybugs were flying and landing on me. And they, you know, I ended up taking that picture with my timeless watch that I ended up there oh. in the email with a quote that from a, a group called the Magnetic Fields that says, Why would I stop loving you 100 years from now? It's only time. Mm. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, and it just miraculous just really <laughs> you know. well so. I'm just amazed that these insects landed on your watch and and stayed there I mean I don't have that happen at all <laughs> but then I don't have a timeless or faceless watch <laughs> right who knows maybe you <laughs> find some time <laughs> see what happens um, yeah you know the the only one that was posed was the bee. Um, okay. Other than that, they all happened to cross my watch on their own. I've, I've literally, like like I say, when that spider jumped on me a week ago, just sitting on the bench, it seemed pretty specific. You know, it seemed like he was, he was, you know, pointing out um, the watch. You know, he was he was giving me a message because remember, I met with Maria here first on June sixth, okay. and. In relation to that proverb six six that says "Go to the ant, the buggered consider ways and be wise," um, which I think you know relates to slugs talking to some go to get it. Um, but I actually met Yo Yo the jumping spider. That video you'll see was taken on June sixth. So you know I think there's some in connections in in time space alignment. That yeah. <laughs> the serendipities. Um, yes, yes. Coincidence. So, and I, I really just do believe that, you know, um, there are messages in everything, and it is a matter of just awareness. I mean, if, if we're going to be afraid of the spider, we're not going to get the message. If we kill the spider, we're not going to get the message, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And that spider, that particular spider right there, the orb weaver spider that happened by the Infinite Peace Garden, actually inspired me to spread the seeds of infinite peace and weave them into a world wide web. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so that's part of one of the things that's uh, is um, featured here in the exhibit outside are these sunflowers that grew in the infinite peace garden that we're now spreading seeds around the world from. Mm -hmm. And there's a treasure chest you can find so you can kind of be a part of doing that digitally in Second Life. So let's oh. move to the next frame. Yeah, we'll find okay. it. We'll find it. Before you leave, I want to make sure you, you get that. 
Um, I notice uh, there's a butterfly that's flying around your hat. Oh, yeah. It, it <laughs> lives, lives in my hat. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glad you noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> I think he changes um, color every time he flies. Oh, he does. Yes, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you said, if you're, the insects jump on your timeless watch, and so this butterfly, maybe you should have, like, butterflies and grasshoppers flying around your hat. <laughs> I did have a butterfly on my shoulder. I don't know where he went. Unless the when I changed my clothes or something. I, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Find him again. Okay. But anyway, this frame is moss. So, um, some of these pictures, most of them, I think, in, in the Infinite Peace Garden or in the Mesilla Park, where in, the Infinite Peace Garden is. Um, the Infinite Peace Garden is just a small uh, garden with a bench with a couple of butterfly bushes, some sunflowers and other flowers. And it's just really a remarkable space where sitting on the bench you can have a real um, intimate close-up observation of nature. And I've seen creatures there that I've never seen before. And... And, you know, just with this picture here, the sunflower, you see a bee, a moth, and some beetles over there on the right. Oh, so did you, this is uh, a real life Infinite Peace Garden? Yes. Okay, uh, where this, is this at? This is in, in Nemesilla Park in Canton, Ohio. Nemesilla Park is the oldest park in Canton. It quite literally was the heart of Canton's growth. And Canton, okay. You know, the OJs, the song The Love Train. Mm -hmm. Um and that's where the OJs held their family reunion picnics. And oh, okay. It's actually on OJs Parkway. It's at 1001, the OJs Parkway. So, that's interesting, and we'll get a little bit more into that as we move around here, and I'll show you some other things. But this moss right here is a tiger moss, and they don't fly, these females. And, and when I found that, it was on the pavement with a lot of traffic walking around. I didn't want it to get hurt, so I picked it up located it to a cone flower which you can see outside mm -hmm. and the picture that resulted is really beautiful and and I feel like a blessing of dominion as I'll call it because dominion is actually you know something I think humans take arrogantly sometime and they think well I can stomp a boss or that spider if I want but dominion actually one of the definitions is an order of angels mm -hmm. and I think that that's what we're meant to be like stewards of care for all creation so by caring for that moss I was given a very beautiful picture of that and this one this little moss right there there's a, a oh, I couple see it. Yeah. video in the the playlist that I sent you um, but I was reading that book under what I actually call the tree of life and I laid oh. it there with the butterfly bush and the flower and acorn from the tree and as soon as I did, this little moth flew down and started feeding off that butterfly bush, and it gave me the most grandiose appreciation for all life. Beautiful. We don't look at moths like that as, you know, <laughs> you know just ha giving them much value in life, really. But to see it just feeding on, on that particular book is just, uh, you know, remarkable. Mm. Oh. So, like I say, there's a few seconds of video in the playlist to show you and mm -hmm. well there it is again the same yeah the same that's a, mm -hmm. okay. yeah and just I mean I can't tell you how watching it just you know it just expanded my my empathy for everything you know empathy is so important in nowadays times right Absolutely. Particularly as regards nature and involvement in taking care of the planet and respecting all the creatures, this is so important. Mm -hmm. Are Are you uh, recording, by the way, Maria? I am recording, but uh, before posting, I will tell you both if you agree with the video or if you don't want this posted, just tell me. Okay, but okay. just in case I'm recording, okay? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. So that that is a hummingbird moth, one of the quickest creatures on the planet. And wow. uh, I've never seen one like capture that. a picture with its wings as that still is is not easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> First time I saw one, I was I didn't know what it was. It was freaking me out. Like, is that a big bee or it looks like a hummingbird, but it's a moth. 
I don't know what kind of moth that is, but interesting. There's a hummingbird moth and a monarch in the same photo. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. That moth was on the lamp in front of my grandmother's house one night. There's another one of those tiger moths. Mm. Okay, this picture, um, the that caterpillar is a gypsy moss caterpillar, which is often seen as a nuisance and that people use pesticides to try to rid our environment of. But the day that was taken, it was actually Peace Day in Nemesil Park. My uh, soulmate, Amy, she was uh, in a drum circle, and the caterpillar was on my mom's shoulder, and I, I took it and put it on the rose. I said, it's a good sign. I had no idea what was about to happen, but I walked over to Amy, and I handed her the flower, and she held it down to her purse where that pin she had, uh, that I had given her the last time I saw her, and the caterpillar then crawled right over the pin to mirror the swallowtail. <gasps> oh, I'm I'm so happy you reacted that way. Amazing. It, <laughs> it, it's amazing. It really is. I'm just so glad you felt it that way, because because to me again, it's a message. You know, it's like I call that picture oh. scene MDNA, because here oh. we are trying to kill the gypsy moth caterpillar, but of course those pesticides affect everything. You know, um, and you know a caterpillar. We've learned now that DNA tests have shown that all butterflies are actually descended of moss. Huh. So it's all the same DNA. Interesting, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. And, and I've had some people be so touched by that photo that, you know, wanted copies of it for themselves for what... Yeah, it's a miracle. So let's move to the next frame, and this is butterflies and caterpillars. And this one right here where we're looking at is one of these examples of how timelessness, spending an unmeasured amount of time in nature give you kinds of gifts. Because this caterpillar, and I might have to come back to it if it changes, but this caterpillar was hanging from a thread when I first saw it, and I couldn't see the thread. It was just like it was dancing around in midair. And I was trying to photograph it, and all of a sudden it disappeared. And I was like, "Oh, where'd it go?" And I realized it fell. I'm just going to click back through and get to get back to it. Anita, are you here with us? Uh huh. Okay. This is, uh, what, now this is called the caterpillar or butterfly. Oh, oh gosh darn it! I clicked too fast. Um. I did it again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I did it again. Oh no, I know where it's at now. <laughs> there. Okay. Now. So, so, so what do you call this? The caterpillar or the butterfly frame? The picture? The whole frame itself, the series of photos in it. Oh, the, these are butterflies and caterpillars in this particular oh, okay. frame. So, yeah, each frame has a theme, you know, they're just uh, kind of grouped, you know, um, moths, butterflies, slugs, spiders, ants, and other things. <laughs> so, but anyway, this, this caterpillar then, I followed it once it fell on the ground, and amazingly it gave me this, what looks like this beautiful smile face on a heart-shaped petal that looks like a face, right? Now, if you look at the the shadow of the blossom, it's like the swallowtail of a butterfly wing. See that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, that's miraculous, right? You can't plan that. It's just, it's, and again, I, you know, I wasn't measuring time. So, and this one I call Real Life Yoga. It was taken me and Amy working together in a program of photography and yoga with kids. And the butterfly flew down and landed on the Rose of Sharon, kind of as a punctuation of something that I had said to Amy um, about just showing up and trusting God. And then the ant just happened to pose there too. Well, for me, the ant was a message <clears throat> uh, because... 
I have a bit of a relationship with ants, and like in my house, I used to have ants like all over, and I refused to kill them. I really just would pray about them, and it kept getting worse for a time until I remember actually saying, you know, God, can you talk to the ants or something? <laughs> so we come to some sort of cohabitation because I don't want to kill them, but this is really getting crazy. And shortly after that, I noticed there were no more ants in our house. Oh, wow. Amazing. And so the That's day this picture was taken, I, would, I picked some flowers for Amy, and I was putting some water in a cup, and I saw an ant crawling up my door. And impulsively, I almost knocked it off, and I thought, no, I trust God, and I let it go. And that's why I feel the ant is in that picture. That ant was the confirmation to me of real life yoga, because yoga really means to unite, to be connected with everything. Oh. <laughs> and this is what I call my soulmate drum. It actually is, you know, has two drums on either side of that stick. And there's actually a picture of me and Amy on that drum. And that butterfly hmm. landed right on it. <laughs> my mom actually watched that happen. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that was... Uh, what's that? Yeah, it was beautiful. It was uh -huh. beautiful. So I'm not going to go through everyone, but they, these are just some beautiful creatures. Like, I had never seen a butterfly like that um, oh. in the Infinite Peace Garden. It appeared one day. Oh. And this one I call help, because it's no sweat to lift a finger, but it means the <laughs> Osby Bridge. <laughs> There's an admiral butterfly, which as I told you we had a flood in the basement. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, the restoration lady that came the lady that came with the restoration company, an admiral butterfly landed on her back while she was here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I think that's a sign. Um that's the same butterfly that was in the real life yoga picture. That one was a birthday in Perception Park. This oh, one is message, and you'll see this outside again as we go around back. But I've always said that my greatest challenge is crossing the bridge of words between dream and reality, and this picture illustrates that quite well. I think um, we actually started the love train, and because of some circumstances, it was derailed, and we have an abandoned train station. So. It's a, it's a challenge to get it back on track, but like the little engine that could, which is also featured outside, cloud, um, when the tunnel collapsed, you got to find another way to get the dream. So that's one of the reasons I'm really here in Second Life, um, kind of grow the story of the love train and reflect it back into reality. You know, I love your space because many people use Second Life as a place to forget their real life, but you managed to integrate very well in your gallery, your daily life experiences with uh, the many features that make uh, it possible to interact here in Second Life. So I really like that. I really love your perspectives of everything. You you speak <sighs> so clearly on um, what I ha intend. Yeah. Impression. Yeah. Thank you. This one I call Broken But Believing. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That butterfly did not seem to be hindered by the breaks in its wings, and it seemed sad at first, like I almost didn't want to take the picture, but then when I realized he was still enjoying my butterfly bush and not not seeming to be bothered by those breaks, I, I took the picture, and I think it is quite beautiful as a message of being broken but believing. Such a beautiful message. And... Uh, yeah, in fact, I gave a tour to somebody that I learned was bedridden with cancer, and I didn't know that. Here I'm giving her a tour of the exhibit, and she's, you know, laughing. She's really having such a great time. Here I was showing her that picture and told me of her situation. It was really, you know, I was, I was, I was moved, really, that, and how much this exhibit meant to her, that she, she was bedridden, able to really wow. enjoy wow. You know, nature and fly on a butterfly and do these things that, you know, you know, Second Life really offers a lot of opportunity for people who are disabled. Mm -hmm. it, it does. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> this butterfly showed up while I had my grandmother in the Infinite Peace Garden, and it stayed the whole time we were there. It flew down as soon as she sat down and stayed the whole time. Mm -hmm. And there's 
Butterfly on the railroad track, seeming to give that message again. <laughs> <laughs> Which you'll see in a in a, there's a poster on the back of the building that kind of weaves all that together. And there's that black butterfly again. Beautiful. Okay, next frame we have slugs. Slugs, <clears throat> oh my <goodness>. Okay. <laughs> Now, like I was telling Maria, she met with me here on <clears throat> June 6th. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the, excuse me. <clears throat> the scripture, Proverbs 6, 6 says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Now, we might perceive that reading it to be like it's talking to someone who's get it, but I, it's not the impression that I get. After hmm. getting to slugs, I think it's actually referring to ants and slugs. Um... Go to them and consider their ways. And be so I got to know these slugs over about three years' time on my grand steps. And, mm -hmm. and at first I was just relocating them because I didn't want them to get stepped on. And I'd like, you know, hey, stay off the steps. And they seemed to actually learn this o over time, like on <laughs> walls. And, wow. But, you know, maybe when I first touched them, they cringed. But after a time, they got to know me and I would come up and, you know, talk to them and at them and you know I sluggard you know <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is another slug that in uh, in my garden one day but see oh, these see how they look like they're forming symbols uh -huh. uh, the night this happened there was a cicada laying on the steps and I thought it was dead and I went to pick it up and it jumped to life and just startled me and <laughs> I feel like working together as a team because if it wasn't for the cicada I would have ran up the steps and missed the slugs, but because the cicada caught my attention, then I looked and realized what the slugs were on. I was like, "What is going on there?" Wow. And I went over, started photographing them. And as I was photographing them, they would like form different symbols, like oh my goodness, look at that! Unicating. And that looks pretty determined, right? I mean, doesn't seem very random, you know. Um, and this next one almost looks like you know the golden ratio, which is in everything in nature, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they so, did this just for you. Well, such beautiful uh, dance. <laughs> the mean, story, the yeah, the story gets a lot deeper than that. You know, it's oh, only it so here. <laughs> it does because uh, my partner at Nonprofit Commons had an encounter that very same day uh -huh. with a, an earwig and a cricket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that seemed to be kind of working as a team on her end, and uh -huh. yeah. Very interesting things that, um, yeah, I just don't think we can discount them, that there's something more going on and that, that interspecies communication is, I think, more our lack than okay. the animals, you know. Um, yeah. They look so beautiful, you know. I was raised to believe that the slugs were ugly or disgusting and they look like a small jewels they are really really beautiful mm -hmm. that's a beautiful way to see them jewels yeah um yeah well, i have a little story to tell you okay and uh it's because of just visiting your garden and you were telling how nature has messages for us so my husband and i were driving into sacramento and uh, got cut off this guy deliberately went in front of us to slow us down, and this is on the highway. And fortunately, I did not react instantly, or my husband did not react instantly, but we knew exactly what this guy was doing. So, even though I didn't react negatively, I still was kind of, um, I guess, anger maybe by that, um, by that action. And uh, any and um, but on the other hand, we did witness someone letting somebody else in. They purposely slowed down so that person could go in. So that was the good part. And then we had this experience, experience which was the bad part. So I went into my garden, and I I was looking around, and I start pulling weeds, and I realized this is this is life. Yeah. We're constantly always pulling out things that are negative. Um, there's always good things, but there's also bad things. And eating is part of 
negative, you always pull things out. So the message I got from my garden is, this is just life, and don't don't get. I get tend to get really personal. I take it too personally, and so I realize through just being in my garden that I shouldn't take things personally. This part of living earth. What a fantastic story. You know, I wait a minute. <laughs> I lost y'all. Okay, here we go. No, I think that that's a wonderful uh, lesson to learn from nature. I want to read a quote I, I heard just today. Okay. Uh, it says, ultimately, the beauty we see in nature, no matter what size or scale, pet, puts humans in the center of the grand creation. We are a conduit, a bridge between the galactic large and the atomic small. We respond to beauty and connection. That is why we must tend our gardens. Oh, okay, I like that. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, we are so used to wanting to control everything and to select everything and this I like, uh -huh. and this I don't like. And actually the world uh, tells us otherwise, nature tells us otherwise. So, but, but we have this very human quality of wanting to control, particularly a space that we think that belongs to us, our garden, our house. And it's actually all just rented. <laughs> we are going, only going to have this, uh, these blessings of a good house, a good garden, whatever just for a short period of time, so nothing is really ours, um, actually, do you agree? It's not much different than Second Life in that way when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we... Actually, so temporal. <laughs> temporary. Yeah, actually, Second Life has caused me to look at reality differently. You know, I look huh. at land differently. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So let's go down here to the corner and you'll see the spider frame. Okay, spider frame. So there's just like a daddy long leg on one of our sunflowers in the infinite peace garden. And there is Yo-Yo the jumping spider. And okay, so and you cute. You have to watch the video to really see what, you know, I was almost afraid to share for a while because it's just so amazing that this spider was just playing with me. And you watch the video. <laughs> It's pretty obvious. It's, you know, um, yeah, that's why I named him Yo-Yo. He was attached by a web to my finger, and he would mm -hmm. keep jumping to my camera lens. And when I would look for him, I'm like, where'd he go? And I realized he was back on my finger because he never left. He was attached the whole time. Oh, okay. Wow. And he did that for over an hour. I really don't know how long he would have spent with me because wow. I had to go <laughs> left, left him on a tree. And when you watch the video, you see there's that like awkward moment of letting go of a friend you might not see again. As he actually jumps back to me from the tree after I let him go. So I have to wonder if, you know, I did a presentation called Reality's Dream. <clears throat> and I was that, you know, maybe, maybe the, the dream of jumping spiders is that humans realize that all they want to do is play <laughs> nice that's the orb weaver spider <clears throat> that happened along by the infinite peace garden now normally they make their webs in wooded areas and they're nocturnal so people don't see them often but why that one was happening across the grass like on a long journey past the infinite peace garden that day could only be to be a messenger like you know, where was he coming from, where was he going, and why was he just running, walking across the grass by that particular garden in the middle of the day. <clears throat> but it was because of him that um, I kind of had the idea to weave the seeds of infinite peace into a World Wide Web. Mm. Working on that and literally spreading seeds from the sunflowers of the infinite peace garden um, around the world now. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Yeah. I was a bit reluctant to let him do Me that. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Quite big. I was, yeah, but I was pretty sure that he wasn't there, or she, it's actually a she, uh, that she wasn't there to, to bite me. But, you know, I really believe that she had a message for him. Are they poisonous? Um, I believe so, but not, oh. uh, not deathly so. Okay. Um, yeah, but... <clears throat> 
I, I really, I'm not really sure about that, so don't quote me. <laughs> okay. He's got a face on his back. He does. Mm hmm That's part of the, what I, I got the message. Like, I, I took a picture, I sent it to my sister, and she said, oh, it looks like it's got the, it's carrying the world on its back, you know, or like a face. And I went, yeah, it's, you know, that's what it is. It's the orb weaver spider, you know. Mm hmm well, that was the message he had, or she had for me. Oh, Look at that little jumping spider there. That's interesting. Huh. In there. there it is, a little closer So up. cute. <laughs> and that one's so cute, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a little vampire. With green teeth. That, that one is in mid-jump. He was jumping onto my camera. Oh, uh -huh. Wow. Um, How many eyes does a spider have? I see at least... I, be I believe eight. Eight. That's what I thought. Yeah. And that one's in the playlist, too. It's just a few seconds. You see me talking about him and saying how beautiful he is, and he jumps right on the lens of my camera. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that one looks... Uh, I don't know. I think that's like a wolf spider or a, a fishing oh, spider, maybe. I'm not sure. There it is. But that was in the Infinite Peace Garden. A lot of creatures. That's actually Yo-Yo on my sunglasses. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, you know the, the picture that greets you uh, coming into the gallery? Uh-huh. Like me just holding my glasses up to the sun, seeing all the scratches. <laughs> oh, yes. Translucent. Transparent, spider. yeah. There's a beautiful picture of him when I let him go on the tree. I love that picture. Okay. <clears throat> See the the see through its legs, yeah, his legs. Ooh, that's cute. And that one looks pretty menacing there, but that's that's the one that you'll see jumped on my camera in the video too. Okay. So well, that's it. Let's move to the next frame quickly. And okay. this frame is just a lot of different like wonders in nature that <clears throat> I've discovered. Like <clears throat> like this picture is called Lily Moon. It's actually Amy's favorite picture, and it's the reflection of trees that were behind me that were no longer there. They took them out to uh, when they were building a library, so it's kind of an example of sometimes the beauty you don't see until it's gone. Yeah. Um, and the lily on the water, and then the moon reflected in the center there. So Sorry. what's interesting is if you, if you mirror image this photo, and I don't even know what inspired me to do it, but... It looks like a happy frog. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see the smiling frog? Let me see. Yeah, there is like a, a face. Oh, I see it. I see it, yes. You see it? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I see. That's amazing. Can you hear uh -huh. me okay? I took my, yeah, oh, yeah. off my earphone. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you really good. Yeah. Oh, good. So, yeah, and and it's just so yeah. So this picture was kind of taken almost in the same spot, and I did a year-long documentary in this park I call Perception Park. It's called Sippo Park, is what it's called. But there was actually a trail marker that called Perception Trail before they built this big library. Um, but. This was taken, I did my year between 314-2003 and 314-2004. I'd walk the trail three to four times a week and photograph everything. This was taken on my last day of shooting. And do you know what it might be? The surface so, of a lake or something with oil spilling or something? That's, that's what I think. It is. Yeah. It's, it was oil left by the bulldozers that were taking out trees. Oh. And so I kind of see it as a representation of creation, but I uh -huh. like to say that regardless of what we think of creationism, we have to admit whether as humans we're not really capable of creating anything, we only arrange the elements we're given. And we're not that good at it because that looks like a nice, beautiful, abstract art piece, but it's just oil in a puddle, right? But I want to go back to it for a second because I want to show you what my... What Amy said she saw in it, which I think is pretty significant, she says at the top there, she sees like sperm about to fertilize an egg, like mm -hmm. the spark of creation. Can you 
that. All right. So that's interesting when you think that it was taken on 314, 314 representing pi, and then Revelation 314 talks about the creation of God, and Exodus 314 is where God says, I am that I am. So pretty oh. interesting that was actually taken on 314. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Coincidence. More yeah. serendipities. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I don't think they're... Yeah, I, I, yeah. Coincidence is actually, I think, a misused word anyway. You know, like we use it to dismiss connection, but I... no, no, there is a connection in every coincidence. In my opinion, there's always yeah. a connection in everything that happens. Right. Absolutely. Yes, that's what it's. <laughs> yeah, and it's for me. It's very exciting to have that awareness. You know, even it to is. be able to be aware of like how you get to where you are in any station in life. Like I could tell you like this person led to this person led to this person and now I'm here. And I think it's really exciting to be aware of those links. In fact, <clears throat> uh, the, the flood we had in the basement caused me to find a stack of old pictures and a couple of people that were just really important to defining my life, even though they didn't know that. Um, I can look back and say, well, how did I meet this person? Oh, it's because of this person. Well, then how did I meet them? And you keep following that back. It's amazing the thing you find. <laughs> um, so this picture here <clears throat> is uh, something that I had written about the next picture you'll see <clears throat> about a flower that was discarded. And I picked it up and said it's going to be art. And I wrote that for a class handout. And I laid it there. And I was picking up my stuff after the class, and I came back to pick it up, and I saw the slug. I thought it was a piece of dirt, and I saw it moving. I'm like, oh, it's a slug. So I, it was dark out, and I just had it in frame. I flashed three pictures, and I went home, picked it up, went home. I get home. I sat in front of my computer in a speechless state of shock when I realized there was a spider sitting on that egg. And in oh, the sub photo, amazing. You see the spider walking away. So he was only there for that instant, and I can only feel that they came along to confirm the message that was really about just showing appreciation for all things. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the picture that that last picture talked about and the flower that uh, a friend had discarded and I picked it back up and said that, you know, this flower is going to be art and I left it on that rock. Oh, no, so okay. you're imaging it. Um, it brings out all these different representations of different culture. People say they see a pagoda and an African mask, and if you look down the center, like all kinds of different things. The rock that the flower is sitting on looks like a, a dolphin, if the one yes, side is. Does. Yes. Or, or a turtle. <laughs> or a turtle if the other side is his nose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's true. I can see both. <laughs> So isn't it amazing that just because of showing appreciation for that flower, all of those things are seen? And it's just like that representation of everything. So I call this picture, everything is everything. And so if we uh -huh. turn it upside down, oh. it, whoops, I skipped too fast. Wait a minute. We'll get back to it. If we turn it upside down, it looks like a dragonfly. Oh, yeah. So oh, I see. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? It is. Yeah. And so one wouldn't happen without the other. You know, the picture with the spider and the slug wouldn't have happened if uh, that didn't happen first. Right. Uh, right. And it's, it's all connected, like you say. So that flower, on the same trail, a couple years later, I was walking with another friend, and we found that flower discarded. And again, I picked it up and said, this flower is going to be art. As soon as I started walking, a grasshopper jumped out of the woods onto the flower in my hand. And you can see that flower outside. Maria, you've seen that photo. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this picture, uh, that particular flower, can be seen in five different pictures within the exhibit here. A mm. little photo thing you can play, see if you can find them all. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I, again, will, you know, I will ask my students to find the other pictures so to, okay. to, to answer this question because they are going to love this. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I want to, I, you know, I want to kind of more gamify this in a way, like with those kinds of things that people can find and, you know, maybe post pictures and show evidence that they found them and, 
you know, learn and win win something along the way. Something. <laughs> um, so this is like a, a a a kind of a gathering of fungi families to me. Isn't it interesting how there's like you know clusters of like different colored ones, like they're mm -hmm. different different types all gathering, which is Beautiful. in Nemesilla Park. The vision we have is to make it a, a, a space of multicultural blending. So, but the, you know, the fungi were already showing us there on top of that. <laughs> this picture was taken in the same spot as that Lily Moon uh, picture that mirror image looks like a frog. And if you've ever seen the movie James and the Giant Peach, remember the green things? So there were these thousands of green things, and we thought that we could actually reach our hand in and have a handful of them, but they were strangely elusive, <laughs> and we didn't know what they were at the time. Oh. <laughs> we discovered that they're some sort of uh, blue-green algae, I think, um, that they actually use in kombucha, I think. <laughs> 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 but uh, but it was just this magical moment that we shared, and. And like I say, like you thought you could just lift your hand up and have a handful of them, but they they just were strangely elusive. You couldn't catch them. It was really odd. Now, what do you see in that picture? <clears throat> it looks like a heart. It does look like a heart. Oh, it also, is, yeah. Uh, so it looks like, where are you from, Anita, by the way? Oh, I'm uh, in, in Northern California. Okay, um, this looks like a heart, of course, but also remarkably like the state where I'm from, Ohio. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And if it is Ohio, then that sprout is positioned pretty close to where I am in Canton, Ohio. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So, that... Uh, <laughs> I found in the dried lake bed of Salt Fork Lake, which is about an hour south of me, on my birthday, in fact, and it oh. kind of my my place of birth in the earth. But more so, it told me that something was meant to grow from this spot, and even more so that this is the heart of the heartland. If you think that oh. the world is rolling because of an innovation called the tapered roller bearing, which came from the Timken Company in Canton, Ohio, you know, this is, this is the heart. So... <clears throat> Um, also, Canton is situated on top of one of the world's largest freshwater aquifers. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Amazing. This picture was uh, taken on top of the Empire State Building in a cloud. Remember, wow. James landed the giant peach on top of the Empire State Building. So, this is kind of like you're standing on top of it. Uh, displayed with the, that question, what if heaven was here and we didn't recognize it because we were too busy building our own complex worlds on top? Uh. Incredible that it was actually taken on top of the Empire State Building, right? <laughs> oh, we're back to the Lily Moon, so we'll move on to the next frame, which is Dragonflies. <clears throat> there's a dragonfly on the railroad track seeming to give us that message about the train again <laughs> she says a quote from never ending story where Falcor says the only way to go on a quest is having a luck dragon with you <clears throat> this one is called the messenger excuse me <clears throat> sorry I clear my throat a lot um, this one is called the messenger and the reason why is because uh, the day that was taken my godfather was having a garage sale and I thought he had dropped a fake one. I almost stepped on it. And I couldn't understand why it was just sitting there. I reached down and touched it. And it just kind of like walked a step. But it didn't didn't fly away. <clears throat> and so I took its picture. And when I was pretty satisfied that I had photographed it, I reached down again. And like I actually lifted its wing up to see if it had injuries or something. And I did the same thing with the one on the other side. And then it finally took off, flew over the shed next door and disappeared showed the picture to my godfather, Sam, who's 99 now. And he said, oh, yeah, like I was on the door yesterday. He goes, you weren't around. He goes, I was afraid to open the door. So I had to wonder if he just didn't want to have his picture taken and know where to come. Because, again, I call him the messenger because, for me, he brought a couple of messages. Interesting messages to learn from one who flies. Because one of them is that 
even the ground is art. Never would have looked at my walk that way if it wasn't for that dragonfly, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. And, yeah. And also that we should watch our step because we share this planet with a lot of creatures and it would have been a very different picture had I stepped on it. <laughs> very, very important message. Okay. <laughs> This one was taken in Central Park, where I was last weekend again. Oh my goodness, look at that. At Belvedere Castle. So I call it Belvedere Castle, where dragons fly and pose for pictures. <laughs> and that's what he, that's a close-up of that same dragonfly there. Oh, <laughs> Beautiful just wings. To show, uh, just to show you how close I was getting to him and... I didn't try to touch that one. I might have been able to, but I don't. Uh, but that was kind of an early on encounter with, and I was just amazed with myself, you know. Here's one more picture of me. Looks like a little biplane there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he was just—he just kept landing right there and letting me set up my angle and just, you know, take that picture. Um, yeah. That's one that actually. <clears throat> Kind of looked like he bowed down in the Infinite Peace Garden <laughs> on oh. the on the uh, walking stone right in front of me. And that is one of my favorite pictures of my relationship with nature. Because to have a damselfly just sit in your hand with it that peacefully is, is really a remarkable experience. Beautiful, yes. It's called oh. Dancel... Dancel... It's a... Yeah, it's a damselfly, yeah. D-A-M-S-E-L, damselfly. Yeah, I call it friendly, friendly dragon. <laughs> oh, yes. Isn't that awesome? Love that. Oh. And there's like a translucent dragonfly in the Infinite Peace Garden. It's like he's part of the garden. And there's that dragonfly on the railroad tracks again. So, on to the next frame, which is bees and wasps and I think a few beetles. That beautiful wasp there. So, one of those little sweat bees. Looking gorgeous. Look at the pattern on it, you know? Beautiful. You know, wasps, everybody's taking care about bees lately, but wasps have this bad reputation uh, and uh, it's it's uh, it's sad <laughs> right do you remember oh, that we told of... we talked about cockroaches and uh, this kind of yeah. it's one of these kind of bugs that has a bad reputation like cockroaches the i think wasps. i think in a way it's it's kind of the same as we were talking about the moss and the butterflies you know we we love butterflies, but we don't necessarily give the same value to a moth. And yeah. Kind of in the same way, of course, uh, wasps are just as important to pollinization and, and things, especially if, when we don't have as many bees. So. Yeah. All these creatures uh, accomplish some purpose and some task in nature. So here's something really remarkable. Um, these Japanese beetles uh, that are on a plant that I actually could have pulled as a weed and almost did, but thought, no, you know, the Infinite Peace Garden is what I call a harmony garden. It's, you know, it's, there's, there are flowers that are planted by humans, but there are also things that we let grow and we learn from. And so this particular plant, I let it grow, end up discovering that it attracts Japanese beetles that then feast on its leaves and don't touch anything else in the garden. And I think that's a remarkable revelation. So, I'm right now. I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to identify this plant because I even have another uh, friend that I connected with on Instagram that's a real gardening expert that's having trouble with uh, Japanese beetles. And I think if we could just give them what they want, then you know we don't have to use pesticides or anything unnatural to uh, oh. to have a yeah you know a a, 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 a relationship with nature. Because it's, I can sit on that bench and watch hundreds of them just feasting on that one plant, and they don't, they don't touch anything else. There's some video in the playlist of that too. Okay. But look right there, that's that's the plant, and that's the flowers that when it 
when it blooms later in the season. Beautiful. Yeah. This mosquito, I was teaching some kids in the in the park one day, and I was showing them pictures on my uh, computer, and this mosquito landed on my backpack, and they were freaked out by it. And they were like, oh, my gosh, look at that big mosquito. And I said, you know, don't worry. I don't even think those ones bite, but I took this picture, and then I showed them the picture, and then they were looking at it differently, and they're going, wow, look at its eyes. Look at the pattern in its wings and seeing it differently. And then we give them cameras, and they were out photographing caterpillars and spiders and things that they might not have otherwise seen the beauty. <laughs> that is a what I call a prairie dog bee because they actually burrow and they have a, a home right behind the infinite peace garden and I know when they sprayed pesticides in the park years ago for gypsy moth that it had a very dramatic effect on the bee population as well so it's really nice to see them picking up home in the garden but I'd never seen burrowing Bees before. Oh, Beautiful. They're green, they're green like that? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're almost like beyond green when you see them in the light and the sun. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. Look like kind of like fish colors, you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. Oh. It's a tiny fly. It is really tiny, too. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the pattern in that leaf, you see how kind of close we are to it, you know? Yeah. Look, I just noticed. Look, there's Ohio. Can you see Ohio to the left of the fly? <laughs> the pattern on the leaf? <laughs> oh, hello, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's next? Oh, what is that? Black wasp. Now, there's a blue wasp that's really elusive. I did finally catch a couple pictures and a little bit of video of them one day. I wanted to put it in here, but I haven't yet. Um, okay, next frame. Next frame is grasshoppers and praying mantises. And there's that grasshopper I was telling you about that actually spent over an hour with me after I almost mowed over him. <laughs> so cute. I was talking with a friend who has since passed on when that picture was taken. And I told him, I said, you're not going to believe who's sitting on my finger. I said, I'll take a picture and show you so that picture is even that much more meaningful because John Oliver is since that little tiny grasshopper there I'd never seen one like that there's there's other pictures in here we can see look like little neon alien grasshoppers okay, and the frame is not changing there it goes oh there's there's a baby praying mantis that actually hacked hatched from that egg sac wow after the Infinite Peace Garden was mowed over in 2017. As crazy oh. as that, right? And I was, oh, look to your right. There's a bee we passed up in flight. Oh, okay. See that? Yes. Yeah, it's a pretty cool picture. Um, anyway, when the garden was was replanted in 2018, well, first of all, I have to tell you, I was telling the park board, you can't mow over Infinite Peace. If you do, you're essentially mowing over everyone and everything connected to it. Now, they couldn't necessarily understand that or see the connections. Oh, yeah. right. But when it was replanted in 2018, it has proven that statement in so many ways. Like a praying mantis actually left its egg sac on the butterfly bush in the garden two years in a row after. So. That's a baby one that actually spent some time with me. I actually think he was like the last one out. Actually just shared a bit of time with me before he went on his way. I named him Providence. <laughs> that creature, I'm not sure what it is, but my grandmother says that looks like somebody you'd invite to a party. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> bit scary. <laughs> There's another little bee to the right that we've passed, trying to get this oh, frame. Okay. Why this frame won't change for me. Alien. There it goes. Now, look at that neon little green grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Like a little alien. I'd never seen one like that before. And I don't know if it was just a juvenile, but I've looked online for pictures like that and haven't found anything quite like it. So I'm not sure. Beautiful color. So for some reason, when I click on that frame, it's not changing. You want to try it? Oh. There. 
There's a cicada. Yeah. That's not working. <clears throat> I think Maria, it worked for Maria, I don't know. Um, did it? I think it did. I don't know, sometimes it seems to work for me and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why. Try clicking on it, Maria. Yeah, but it's not working. I'm clicking, but it's it not worked. working. It worked. <clears throat> you can see the frog? Yeah. Okay, I think it worked. Try, try again. Oh, there it goes. I'm not I, sure why it... I'm clicking, but it doesn't really change. Yeah, I know. Me too. I think it's just changing on its own when it wants to. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's oh, enough of it. And, and then to the next frame, we have ants. Ants. Okay, ants. <clears throat> and there's the picture that's on the front of the gallery called Edge of the World, where it looks like the ant is just enjoying the view at the edge of the world. Beautiful. On 11-11-2010, so this exhibit opened on the 10th anniversary of the day that picture was taken. Mm. And I don't know why these frames don't seem to want to advance for me. Okay. <clears throat> this is an interesting one because um, there's an amusement park called Cedar Point, and... Uh, I've been there every year of my life since I was two weeks old. I was born in the summer and my grandma and mom used to go and stay up there. So this picture was actually taken on my way to Cedar Point to preview the new Gatekeeper roller coaster uh, on Media Day before they opened it. And to me it's really remarkable because it's in the mirror and it's the ant just kind of like illustrating a quote from the show Touch that talks about... Um, repeating patterns that repeat throughout the millennia because and that standing only by standing on the shoulders of the past can we truly gaze into the future so I like to say you know how it says objects in the mirror closer than they appear seeing the ant as a representation of time that time in the mirror is closer than it appears <laughs> time and space and the intimate relationship within both right Yes, you're so wonderful, Maria. I just <laughs> oh, I, I love these kind of topics. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have. You have Netflix. I was watching Dark about this. Love that show about this time travel, space travel, <laughs> these kind of oh, things. Anything about time travel? Yeah, I'm definitely into. <clears throat> um, this a, this is a, a good show. Dark. It's a German show. And it's 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 nice, and it's finished because sometimes you start watching some season from a TV show, and uh, it is unfinished, and you are like, "Oh damn!" <laughs> so uh, this is finished, and you can watch the, the It's got three seasons, oh, okay. and it's all about this kind of philosophy, time travel, space travel. The uh, I don't know. It's it's very interesting. We actually use time machines all the time, but we don't think of them in that way. You know, anytime we get in a car or a plane or anything that, you know, changes, um, that puts us in a place where we couldn't have otherwise been, you know, uh, it's is. a time machine, you know. We're actually, absolutely, I absolutely agree. You know, So, let me see if I can, we can click through here quick. I don't know why it's not clicking. <laughs> A couple more photos. The one that you saw before that of the ants on the uh, there. Okay, so this is a multi-tiered symbiosis that we discovered with the sunflowers and the ants and what they call tree hoppers, or I think aphids. Maybe they might be called. Um, but they attach themselves to the back of the leaves, and then the ants actually get. Uh, they secrete like sap from the sunflowers for the ants that then protect them and the sunflowers. So it's really, really, really good relationship. Multi-tiered. Yeah, and we wouldn't have discovered that again if if we hadn't replanted the infinite peace garden and watched what was going on. You know. There's video of that in the playlist too, but. Um, I first noticed, I yeah, when I first noticed, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, are they, 
are they no, growing their young on the back of the leaves? I, young, the <laughs> of the leaves? I didn't yeah, really you know, photographing it, know and 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 photographing it and then researching a little more. And, um, and, they, and they seem to know and they, and they, they seem to know me. When you watch the video, you'll see there's a video in there where it's like um, when I would first uh, come up, they would like one time they almost five of them like just jumped. Well, five of them like jumped on me almost like immediately to protect the plant. But then once they know it's me, I, I feel like they just know it's, they know me, and they're like, oh, it's just him, you know, and then they <laughs> go back to their business. Can't why. Can't <laughs> why. They're friendly giant. Can't get this to advance. Maybe I can, like... It's frustrating. Oh, there, it's I, frustrating. Am. oh, there I am. Resident. Eclectic resident. <laughs> Actually, I'm here. What's that? Oh, did you? Oh, did you? So we're back at the top yeah. now. Yeah, so, so we're back the at the top now. So the next frame is, actually is a picture that was actually in my exhibit at the Empire State, State Building, and it's just a blurred asking image asking people what they see. And so a what puppy. you see. Oh, I see. The head of a puppy? Oh, puppy? Yeah. Okay. I see that's that. What you yeah. see, you see that's what you two. You see too, Anita. I see a dog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I've, so I've never heard the, I've end, of never I've heard the end of this. I, every time I do a presentation, someone says something completely different. Um, but, I've heard um, but I've heard thousands of different things. Everything from a uh, parachute out of a back of a dragster, a rose, dancer. Uh, the mummy, uh, a bride and groom with wet on a wedding night rolling on the floor with a bottle of champagne beside them, a water paper on a snow wow. sled, um, and, and dog is the most common thing said. If you ask a room of ten people, probably have at least four dogs usually. One time I went into a veterinarian's office and everyone said dog. <laughs> it's a matter of perception. It's, really it's a matter of perception. It's really interesting how we all, you know, do see the same thing differently and that there's a reason for that. That's how the public... I love this you know. uh, quote, the fastest snail ever. <laughs> yeah, that's what Ava... Yeah, that's what Ava... She's my, my partner at Nonprofit Commons and really in the whole world-changing vision that we have. Um, her name is Darlene Chernanko in, in reality, and she has some remarkable artwork. I just went to visit her exhibit, which was calling, called Evolving yeah. Perceptions. Um, it was actually, closed it actually closed on my birthday, in fact. And we got to stop at Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, which was nearby on my birthday. Beautiful. I really yeah. like to um, see her work as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share some with both of you. Yeah, I'll share some with both of you. Uh, she's, she I is, she, I don't even have words. Her, her artwork gives me, a feeling that I've never gives me a feeling that I've never really been able to fully but describe, it but it is her representation of connection with everything. Wow, beautiful. There's a great art. I'll send you this art talk that she did from the gallery because I I, 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 I watch it and I get, <laughs> I'm like, I'm amazed that I even know this person and <laughs> that she's, you know, when you look at the work she does too, that she's not one who ever says she doesn't have time. Because I feel like people have time for whatever they think is important. And when you think everything is important, then you have all the time there is. That makes sense. He does. It does when you know Darlene. It's all one. It's all one body, and so you know it's, it's the way I see the world too. Really, that there's really nothing beyond our concern. Oh, one more frame before we head outside. Here by the door, and this picture. Is actually what I woke up to one morning, and I think there's video in the playlist of this. If there isn't, I'm gonna stick it in there for you, or send it to you. Because it's animated, but see how there's like a flag in the top part of the window. Uh huh. And like a ladder. And like a ladder or tracks. I'm gonna try and go back to that. A ladder or tracks that are running. A ladder or tracks that are running up through it. From what look like butterfly wings. Yeah, they look like butterfly that? wings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. On the back. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. Isn't that incredible? I mean, imagine waking up to that. And and the song that just happened to be playing was a song called Immersion, which I coupled with it the, the video. So when you see it, because I think the song really says so much about what we're talking about, and about immersion in the awareness of connection yeah. with everything. You know, I would really like you to include some geckos. I love geckos. Okay. Yes, because uh, if you uh, okay. add some pictures, just please tell me. <laughs> because I love geckos. And it's so fun because okay. I love geckos and my husband really can't stand them. He's afraid of them. So whenever there is a, a gecko around, I save my husband from the gecko. And the opposite with the cockroaches. When there is a cockroach, he um, uh, takes the cockroach and <laughs> takes it away. And uh, he saves me from the cockroaches. <laughs> he saves you from the cockroaches and you save him from the geckos. He well, saves you from the cockroaches, cockroaches and you save him right? from the geckos. Yeah. Well, the geckos that's, will probably that's eat true. the cockroaches, right? <laughs> yeah. So this was, this was another day, same window, but another day. So this was, like this was another day, same window, but another day, and it just looked like the light was so powerful, it was just blowing the yeah, blinds the open. And here was a rainbow that appeared over St. John's And here was a rainbow that appeared over St. John's Church, just now amazingly picture, one day, right quote, over the cross. Now this picture, if you read uh, that quote, what? I think relates to uh, what what this exhibit is about, and I took that picture at the Crazy Horse Memorial in South Dakota while I was having dinner with Dr. Elizabeth Garcia Gray and her Dr. Elizabeth Garcia Janice and her husband Lawrence, who is a Lakota uh, warrior and drug and alcohol counselor on Pine Ridge, South Dakota. And somehow we got by their, the pictures of the slug on their book back there. I remember showing it to you. But uh, all that. Um, but, uh, but we were talking about how to help kids stop committing suicide in Pine Ridge because they're doing oh, like yeah. three times the national average. And I was telling them about the beauty of life, about using photography as therapy. This was my point. So as we were sitting there, this was my vantage point. I'm looking out the window at the Crazy Horse Memorial, and then I back to it again. And while we were we were just getting ready to leave, the light had changed. And while we were we were just getting ready to leave, the light had changed. And so now there was this line of light that was cast across his eyes. And so I took the picture and I said to Lawrence, I said, what does it mean when, so like the Native Americans wear a line of makeup across their eyes? And he said it has something to do with dreams. Well, I had had a dream the night before that about like working with like teenage kids that like there was an element of danger in the dream and I didn't really understand, but I think it was like the idea of committing suicide. Because there's a video called Our Lakota Hearts on, on YouTube of the kids from Pine Ridge High School. And when I watch that video, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the kids that I dreamt of. So if you read that quote, it actually relates to that, that light. And um, I'll, I'll read it for you real quick. May God give them peace. I can get back to it here. Yeah, well, I think, like I say... Yeah, well, I think, like I say, that photography as therapy could have a great impact because I think they've just really lost touch with what their ancestors knew and that connection with nature. Because the way I see the world is what I, I think the way that, you know, the Native Americans, their ancestors saw the world in just connection with everything. So he says, I see a time of seven generations when all the colors of mankind will gather under the sacred tree of life and the whole earth will become one circle again. That day there will be those among the Lakota who will carry knowledge and understanding of unity among all living things. Young white ones will come to those of my people and ask for this wisdom. I salute the light within your eyes where the whole universe dwells. For when you are at that center within you and I am at that place within me, I shall be as one. This picture, I actually took when I this picture, them the I actually the took when I Alex met Johnson them Hotel the day of their in, wedding at the uh, Alex Johnson in Hotel in, uh, in Rapid City, South Dakota. 
as their and, eye. And Liz was so introducing me to saying, people as I, their eye. And so literally people were saying, hi, I, as I sat down in the last available seat at the table, that was, the table, that was what I saw. <laughs> I was a bit stunned in that moment. <laughs> see how the, uh, I was a bit stunned the, uh, in that moment, like and see how the uh, the, the uh, like eye. the neon reflecting yeah. in the window creates a teardrop on the like, eye. Yo, you're the jumping spider in that other. Kind of like yo, yo, the jumping spider in that other picture. It was actually on my home way home from South Dakota that I first heard that lyrics. Friends, I have to ask you, surrounded by the beauty of this place. Why do you make it so hard for all the things you want to come your way? Well, I don't think you see your destiny. Sad. So one more picture in this frame. This picture is a good example. So one more picture in this frame. This picture is a good example of how we don't often see um, the messages that are in front of us. When I took this picture, there was a whole busload of kids that were also taking pictures, and they were saying, "I wish the birds weren't on his head." Here it is. They the couldn't see what I saw. Because here it is, the Lincoln Memorial, and you have black and white dubs, doves, a symbol of, of symbol of peace, the sharing the head and hand oh, of the yeah. man who wrote the Emancipation well, I Proclamation. Well, I call it Emancipation Bird's Eye View. Well, emancipation meant bird's eye view. When, uh, and it Obama meant even more when uh, Abraham Barack Obama, Obama became president, sworn in on Abraham's Bible. <laughs> it's Interesting, huh? It's a symbol of peace, and besides, huh? some of the doves are black, some of the doves are white, so it's a very powerful picture. Mm -hmm. Anita, are you here? Mm -hmm. are Anita, you are you here? Oh, yeah. Where are you? Where is your avatar? <laughs> oh, there you are, back there. Well, since you're back, that's good, because I want to show you a couple of pictures we somehow got by in the slug. Frame here. Right there. Slug came along to read the book Utmost with me, and that's the, that's the, book 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 with me. And that's the doctor that I'm talking about, Dr. Elizabeth Garcia. Her name was Garcia, Garcia Gray at the time, and she married uh, Lawrence Janice since then. And Dr. Shees Brahma was the only doctor with 27,000 refugees in Darfur. And Liz has worked in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and the tsunami in Thailand. and. Um, water purifiers in Africa, and, and they're just some of the most positive, purpose-driven people you'll ever meet. So that's a wonderful book that it seemed like the slug approved of too, right? <clears throat> like Look at this, he's just hanging off the tip of his tail there. And that book was actually featured in major book fairs in Frankfurt, Germany, and London, England. Couple years ago. So I highly recommend. And, and it's just really their letters back and forth while they were working in disastrous situations, and they write quite warmly of their experience in Canton, giving free hugs and uh, being part of the first Hearts Coming Together conference, and starting the love train. So now let's go outside. Well, I think I will stop the video here if you agree because it's already uh, 11 a.m. Uh, sorry, 11 p.m. and I'm starting to get very sleepy. <laughs> but if <Really>? you agree, <laughs> if really? you agree, I will um, upload it to uh, YouTube as an unlisted. And I will send the link to both of you, and if okay. both of you agree, I will make the video public, and you can use the video for anything that you may need. Do you agree with that? Uh, okay. Yes. Would you would you would would you like to see one of my favorite spots right here? Okay, corner, let's look at the favorite spot, here? and then I will I will go to sleep. <laughs> And uh, Anita, it's such a pleasure okay. to meet you. Uh, it's been fantastic as usual. Yeah, there, there's, there's, uh, there's like. Yeah, there, there's, there's, uh, there's like one more session if you guys want to meet one more time to get around. Yeah, the gallery absolutely. And the treasure. Yeah. That sounds good. Sure. Thank you. That would be fantastic. That sounds good. Okay. 
Thank you. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, James and the Giant Peach, you guys have both seen the film? I watched it, but I don't remember. Did you say no? Well, okay. I, I said no. Well, there, there's something you okay. can do. Uh, James, well, it's an animated there, there's film something you can like, do. You know, uh, James, doll. it's an animated uh, film, and uh, it's like, you know, World yeah, Doll. Uh, um, there's a book, but I, I really love the film, actually. Um, but it's very much my life story. James actually befriends the Bugs, who help him achieve his dream of going to New York City, where he lands the giant peach on top of the Empire State Building. And I have an exhibit at the Empire State Building, even featuring a, a, a firefly that hovered in front of my lens. Um, so, and now here I am, you know, befriending the Bugs. And um, so, always follow dreams as dreams always flies, is the message of that. And so... If you look behind you, this is actually a rainbow that actually appeared over the park um, when they had a master plan review meeting for the park that I was telling you about where the Infinite Peace Garden was. This amazing rainbow appeared. And I was like, oh, yeah, master plan. There it is. <laughs> That's. And then the next frame is actually. And then the next frame is actually. That's Jules McWinnie who founded Viridian Gallery, and her birthday was actually the day after the, this exhibit opened, so she told me to do something uh, monumental with this side wall, and so that's Fantastic. what I did. <laughs> Put that up So, real quick, we're going to end by st in the rain over here. This is my favorite. See how there's steam coming off the grass? Just step over here, and you'll be standing in the rain. Wow, I really want this rain area. also in my area. <laughs> I look for it. Yeah. Beautiful. If you, here, you know, it, it won't yeah. if, if you stand here, you know, it, it won't yeah. increase the intensity and in the thunder. Yeah. I, stood here and had a really I love it. Yeah, I stood here and had a really profound conversation with somebody one night um, who was just really opening up to me. The rain had an effect on her. <laughs> and uh, I said, this rain should be purple. <laughs> yeah, purple rain. <laughs> so, second. And just a second here. Uh, here we go. So that, that flower that's growing up out of that rock. So that, that yeah. flower that's growing up out of that rock. <gasps> I'll leave you with that as a story because... Um, the rock is actually where the rain, wherever the rain, you know, where the rock is, the rain, rain is okay. And I, I couldn't make it invisible, so I put the flower on top of it, which actually illustrates something pretty profound in my experience. When I do these presentations of the beauty of life, um, you know, I ran into somebody one day that had actually participated in one of my uh, presentations like a couple years before that, and I was actually having a down day. And this person said to me, oh, I thought of you the other day when I saw a flower growing up out of a rock, and I wouldn't have normally thought anything of it, but because of your presentation, I saw the beauty of it. So, it it looks idea. very beautiful, this, this flower. I, I, it then was then the first thing I noticed uh, in this particular area, this flower over the rock. And it's it, it looks really, really, I don't know, symbolic, even Zen. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave you with that. Yeah. You see it's now raining purple. <laughs> it's amazing what we can do here in Second Life, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And I think the, the best amazing thing is that I can meet with you. That, you know, wherever we are, we can transcend social distance and geography. Yeah, I, I really, I'm really happy. You, you're from uh, Ohio, Eclectic, Anita is from California, right? I'm from Mallorca. <laughs> so, uh, this is one of the most important uh, facts that I always teach my students as well, my students uh, that are learning English and practicing English. Go to Second Life and you are going to meet native speakers. This was my first idea, but you also meet uh, amazing people, right? And and it's it's fantastic that we can have this tool to interact with people from all around the world, much better than Facebook, in my opinion. <laughs> it, it, it is a real 
yes. It, it, it is a real uh, a representation yeah. of the idea of the butterfly effect. You know, the butterflies, wings on one side of the world, creating waves yeah. on the other side of the world. Yeah. Well, and I love this beautiful cherry tree. Oh, yeah, I love my cherry tree. Oh yeah, I love cherry trees, <laughs> and I love cherries. Black and Beautiful. So, so, if we come back here, yes, now, let's finish it here. Story, you so. agree? <laughs> At least I will finish it here. I will send you the link, and we can meet another day to uh, finish the gallery. Right? Do you agree? Yes. Yes, yes, it was so good. fantastic because the story really uh, of reality being broken. I shared a, a couple of pictures in the email I sent you, Anita, that idea. Mm -hmm. And we started the love train in reality, and um, so that story is is really fantastic part of the gallery. So we well, it's always a pleasure yeah. to meet yeah. your amazing uh, space and gallery. Uh, I Kreti, thank you. And also, thank you for the uh, insight. And Anita, it was such a pleasure to meet you. And I will tell you in the future about my teaching project. Okay, I'm going to start the recording here. And I will send it to you in a couple of days. Okay? I just got a picture of you <laughs> catching a purple raindrop, Anita. <laughs> okay, so let's finish it here. <laughs> Really, really make my day. I just you both, so, you so really, really make my day. I just I feel so, blessed so to meet blessed you as to well. Have met you both. So in so amazing oh. and interesting people here in Second Life. So I will send you the link. Thank you. I'm stopping the recording now.